Hi, everyone. Welcome to Belmont News Now, your community update. I'm your host, Maribel Carvajal de Salazar. With the school coming back in person, traffic in town has increased. At January, especially, according to Principal Carla Cusa, the bus ridership is half what it used to be a year ago. Only 261 students are taking the bus. Prior to COVID, the numbers were between 425 and 450 in total. These numbers have obviously impacted traffic in the morning and pickup times. This change has witnessed by Sandy Clement McKinley, who lives right at the corner of Washington Street and Oakley Road. Hear what she says. I'm Sandy McKinley. I am a neighbor who lives at the corner of Oakley in Washington. I am a parent of a Chenery eighth grade student as well as a um, Belmont High School student. Morning and afternoon drop-offs at, um, at Chenery are um, a hubbub of activity um, and our, our, our corner becomes, a, 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 you know, it's a beehive of cars and students um, that are going to converging on and uh, converging on our little corner. Um, the traffic pattern changes from two-way streets to one-way streets, um, and both sides of the Chenery are drop-off um, drop-off zones um, in the morning. They are they turn to pickup zones in the afternoon. Frequently, um, in our most days, our um, parents start lining up about 45 minutes in advance of dismissal um, to get kind of get a good spot. <laughs> Um, for um, to pick up the, to pick up their to pick up their children, um, so we have just a lot of car density. Um, the 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 street narrows considerably, um, and there's a lot of shuffling um, around of cars trying to move past um, each other um, during the uh, during drop off and pick up. So for about an hour and a half, two hours in the morning, because we also have our elementary schools. Um, uh, we have the, the Wellington and the Burbank, um, so we, get, we catch that traffic as well. Um, and the Chenery, we, we have a, a, just a hubbub of activity in the morning. So I don't think that this is any one person or one department's fault. Um, I think that it's a confluence of issues. First, um, the Chenery is um, over capacity. It was a school that was designed for 1,100 students and right now I believe we have over 1,400 students so that is something that is um, just a fact of, of population. The second is that we are coming um, back and returning to school and um, many families have decided that they don't want to take the bus which is absolutely fine and so um, students are being driven to school and it's just adding to the density. Um, similarly, um, families might not need after, out of school time or after school care and so there's an additional concentration of schools in the morning and in the afternoon. And at the same time, um, it's really all of us who are responsible for um, helping to solve the issue. As far as the school, I'm really proud of the school. They've, 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 they've kind of taken into consideration what they could do to help mitigate the problem. Last week, I know they're doing kind of, they started doing staggered release um, and letting the students that um, travel home by bus um, out a little bit early, as well as students who um, travel home by um, by car and, and holding back the students that walk and so um, it's, it's still too early to determine if that helps with the congestion at the end of the day it still doesn't help with the congestion at the beginning of the day but it's nice to see that um, Principal Koza and her team are trying to think of how they could help mitigate the morning and afternoon congestion. Um, and finally it's thinking about what the town and the police can do um, to really help with with the traffic. Um, we are super fortunate to have um, a traffic officer um, who is um, not a crossing guard, but a traffic officer who is able to, to direct traffic here at the corner of Oakley and Washington in the morning. Um, and when he is here, um, this, this corner runs beautifully. But the times that he's not here, the town frequently sends a police officer um, who operates just like a crossing guard. So what we would ask is that the police um, um, direct um, their officers to um, to direct traffic actually and just not just manage the students crossing 
in the crosswalk, but also manage the traffic so that um, traffic flows and that um, students are being dropped off in the middle of the street um, and that traffic moves um, so that everyone stays safe. To talk more about this situation, we have with us today Police Chief Jamie McIsaac. Thank you, uh, Chief, for joining us. As a daughter of police officer, I'm aware of your work and I'm very thankful. Thank you for being with us. Thank you for having, having me here today and welcome to Belmont Media Center. Thank you. Chief, what is in place to regulate the traffic situation at Chenery? Well, you know, first of all, the traffic overall, um, problems at our schools are, are nothing new. Um, we've dealt with traffic around our schools and safety around our schools for a number of years. Um, 10 years ago, we had a vehicle jump a chain link fence and actually hit the Butler School um, at morning drop off. We were lucky at that time that nobody got hurt. Um, Belmont's a unique, unique community in terms of geography. You know, we have six schools in an area that's about uh, half a square mile. So we have um, all of the schools. We've heard uh, when in-person learning came back, uh, we've heard traffic complaints from every one of our schools. Um, the Chenery, it's been a little louder because I think it's the biggest school and uh, we have probably the most traffic up there. And, um, you know, there's only so much we can do with the resources that we have. We need to encourage people to, to walk to school if they can. I know that some people have to drive to school, drive their kids to school. But, um, you know, the weather's nice. Um, if you're home and, and you're not back at, in person at work and you have the ability to walk your, your, your student, your child to school, please do that. The other thing we can do is, um, especially at the middle school, you can park around the, the Belmont Reservoir. There's a lot of parking up there and you can walk down, um, you know, to the school from that, from that area. And that goes for any of the other schools as well. Um, you know, you don't need to drive right up to the school to, to drop your, your child off. So um, we're going to look at a lot of things. We work um, last year, we were working with Safe Routes to School and, and a couple of other groups before COVID struck. But um, yeah, it's tough. And, um, you know, it's, it's the parents. This isn't something that we can blame on cut through traffic uh, like we want to do in Belmont Center and stuff. I mean, I've dealt with uh, tra uh, park, uh, traffic issues around schools for years. And when I was a patrol officer and a sergeant, and we would go out and do enforcement. Many of the same people that we would get complaints from would be the same people going down the wrong way at, um, you know, the middle school on Washington Street or, you know, driving up to double park at the Butler School to drop their kids off. So um, it, it's a tough challenge. Yes. What can we advise to the parents? Well, the first thing you can do is be on time. I know that's, that's tough, but a lot of this is, is generated by um, people who might be, you know, having, being late to bring their child to school. And so, you know, be on time, offer, offer yourself enough time. If you do, you, can, you don't have to drive right to the school. You can park on one of the side streets and walk down uh, to the school. And, um, you know, that and then as, as motor vehicle operators, they have to obey the laws. They have to obey the crossing guards. And, you know, you have to be considerate to your, uh, your, the, the other parents, the other motorists that are dropping people off. Don't make U-turns. U-turns are a very dangerous thing. I see this on White Street. We see it in all the schools. Um, you know, when you start making U-turns, uh, you create problems. Also, um, don't let your, your child off on, uh, you know, where they have to jump from your vehicle and then cross the street to get to the school. Um, that's another thing that, that's dangerous. And just please be patient. And, uh, and look, we, have, we do have some officers out in the area in the morning. Um, at the different schools and up at the middle school to try to control what's going on. But, you know, the class sizes have increased. We, we got uh, a lot of kids. We got a lot of, uh, you know, parents driving their kids to school. These schools in Belmont weren't built or designed to handle this kind of traffic. The roads weren't. We all know that. Um, we don't have drop-off areas. We don't have, you know, uh, adequate ones. And these schools were all designed with the intent that the kids attending them would walk to the school, not that we would have 400 vehicles show up uh, between 8 and, and 8.15 in the morning. You mentioned there are safely areas that they can park. 
can you tell us which one and which street? Well, so there's, uh, there's different streets. There's, um, you know, there's a section of, uh, around each school. There's, uh, you know, Beach Street comes to mind. It's a little tight there, but there's areas you could park on Trapella Road to walk your, your student down to the Butler School. Or um, if you wanted to park up in the St. Luke's parking lot, lot off of Beach Street and Lexington Street and walk down to the school, you could do that. At the middle school, I mentioned there's the reservoir. Um, all, the, all the schools have so-called feeder streets that, you know, if you park there, if you live there, you'd probably walk to school. Um, you know, so it's not necessarily all the time to be right at the, the front door at, uh, at drop-off time to let your, uh, your student know. You mentioned uh, with, the, with the funds that you have, that you have been able to help. What do you think we can do best? With the, the funds that we have? Mm -hmm. So we, we don't, um, you know, people, for instance, there were six schools in, in, the, in, in the first week of in-person asking for police officers to be this. We can't do that. We don't have the personnel to do that. Um, so, you know, we, we try to, what we generally do is we'll do it on a rotating basis. We'll, we'll be up the middle school and then we'll get over to the Winbrook or we'll get over to the Butler and we'll do, you know, maybe the Burbank. Um, so we do it on a rotating uh, basis. I think there's safe routes to school and some other studies that need to be done. I think there could be some grant money out there for improvements uh, around the schools. I think that uh, one thing that we keep talking about, but we, we haven't really uh, developed yet is, um, you know, actually identifying walking routes to the schools. The Burbank School, uh, they had a parent organization over there that did an excellent job. They handed out uh, flyers to parents, basically telling the parents, if you're going to walk to school, this is the way you want to walk to school. So that's the kind of things we're looking for. It's very difficult, though, because these problems, you know, the parents, even if you have parents that are active uh, in a school and they're all in the safety, you know, what happens? Those parents, kids grow up, the parents go on to the middle school and, you know, then they start working on solving the problem at the middle school. And then they go on and, and we have a fresh new batch of parents every year that we have to educate on driving their kids to school, you know, that are, that are shocked when they show up the first time and said, what's all this traffic? Um, so, you know, you have, the, you have the progression of people that want to be proactive and help. They tend to move on. And then we have people coming in that, that need to be educated on, um, on the school safety and, 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 the, and the, the, the traffic around the schools. So you're encouraging uh, the parents to create more walking safely to school and making a groups to go together. That's right. You know, we're a very walkable. Uh, it's Belmont's tough. You know, I, I keep telling people this. We have to stop thinking of ourselves as this uh, suburb, you know, um, and I've always said this. We're a very nice suburb. We are. But our roads are more urban in nature. And um, we have to you know, realize that. You know, that, you know, it's, we, we see it when, when things, we're seeing it now with traffic picking up a little bit, but we're still at traffic counts that we're conducting on the street. We're still down 40, 50% on some of these streets and traffic. So this is really nothing uh, compared to what it, it could be um, when there's, when our streets are really loaded at max. And, you know, there's, there's places that, you know, sometimes you, you're not going to be able to drive there and you're, you're a lot better off. The community is better off if you can safely walk to the school or, or whether it's the Belmont Center or um, one of those, those areas. Thank you, uh, Chief. Uh, anything else you would like to tell the parents? No, just reiterate again to please be safe, be patient. You know, if, if you're running behind and, and, and you're in the traffic, you know, what, what, think of how horrible it would be if, you know, you, you were to strike somebody with your vehicle, all because, you, you know, you wanted to get to the school in time. You wanted to get closer to the school. There isn't a person in this town that would trade off, you know, not hitting a person to walking an extra 100 yards or an extra 200 yards or a quarter mile to get to the school, right? We, we, there's not anybody here that would say that, right? So that's what we should be doing. We should be, uh, you know, looking for a way, scout it out. So, you know what, maybe I'll park on Lincoln Street and I'll walk my, my um, you know, son or daughter up to the crossing guard and, until they're crossed. And of course, this poses different problems, right? Because then the people on the feeder streets, the school start saying, why all these cars? But, you know, it's for a very short time. 
these problems of morning and drop off and, and they're usually, you know, they're hectic for a half hour and then, and then it's over. So yeah, try to, you know, take some time, park away from there and, and, and walk uh, to the school. Thank you, Chief. And thank you also to the guards that are helping the children get safely to school. Uh, thank you for coming on the show. And that's it for today. Thank you for watching. See you thank next. you for having me. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.